Redshift has received a new update, and with it comes a couple of very exciting features. Those being the Redshift RT uh, new rendering mode and the ACES color space being the new default inside of Redshift. So I figured we'd go ahead and take a look at these two things. There is some more stuff that comes with the new update, but these are kind of the major ones that at least I'm most excited about. So you saw a couple of projects there at the beginning. We're gonna go through those and compare the new rendering mode to the old production rendering mode, uh, which is still available and just kind of look at some of the differences between the two. Now there is a bunch of stuff that is not available inside of Redshift RT yet, um, but hopefully here in the near future, that will get some updates and some of those things will be uh, actually available. Some of them to note would be depth of field, uh, motion blur, uh, max on noises aren't included in Redshift RT. You can't use those. Um, there's a number of other things as well, but those kind of are like a, a big three, at least for me. So let's go ahead and take a look at some things here. So if you have your render set up like you normally would inside of Redshift, we have a new, uh, a new UI here actually as well, I believe. And we got some new settings. So we have our production here and then we have this RT. And as we switch between the two, you can see some stuff gets disabled and we can no longer, um, use those, so like motion blur, we don't have that, denoising, we don't have that, but we don't need that because, at least, well, we don't need denoising because this RT engine is super quick and it doesn't require a lot of uh, render passes. Um, yeah, I only set these to 64, I believe, in all three of the renders that you saw, and they render out pretty quick. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this advanced tab as well. So we do still have this advanced tab. Most of these uh, apply to the production, um, but some of these do apply to our RT. If you switch over to their globals here, you can see that you have this uh, settings, which are, rep are applying to the RT render mode. And then big thing here, we have our render space, which is ACES CG, which if you aren't using ACES, you don't know what ACES is, uh, it's a new color space, somewhat new, I guess, um, but it is super powerful and basically allows you to render slightly faster, but more importantly, with a lot more realistic colors, it encompasses a lot um, larger spectrum of color than your normal sRGB, linear, all that stuff. So definitely want to be using this. Uh, it'll make your renders look a lot better. Uh, there's plenty of stuff out there on how to composite and color correct through ACES because it is a little bit different if you just bring in an ACES render into whatever you use to composite or color correct, it's not going to look exactly right. And uh, we'll see that here in a second. So let's go ahead and just uh, render this out. So if we come up to our Redshift, we can actually, we're not going to do that. Let's go to our end play here. Let's just uh, make sure we're on RT, which we are. And let's bring up our M play and render this out. So if it pops up here, it's already almost done. So you can see, basically, it was already done when I pulled it up. Uh, but six seconds to render out this frame of this scene, um, which is super, super quick. Now, I wouldn't even need to render uh, for, the, for that long, to be honest. Because let's go ahead and actually bring up our render view as well. So... There is some new stuff in here too. So this loads up, brings it in, and you can see that it is uh, rendering. And you can see it doesn't really change from the start to when it finishes rendering. It's pretty much, pretty much uh, done. So click that refresh. Let's just wait for it. Build. See, it takes a few samples and then it's pretty much done. So it doesn't even take a, a whole lot of samples. I could probably drop that down to 32 even. And you can see there, it's like done instantly. Even like 16 and 32, there's not really a whole lot of difference between the two, if any. So um, you don't have to crank this up and it renders super quick. You can cut that in your render times there, but there is some differences in the look. We'll take a look at that here in a second. We do have another button here in the render view. So this RT will enable and disable the rendering. So if I uncheck that, it's gonna go over to the production render. If I click that again, it's gonna go back to the RT. Now, if you saw there, let's go ahead, close out of that for now. 
And let's switch this back over to production. Um, my settings, I just set this quality to high and uh, didn't touch anything else. So let's go ahead and render this to end play. And you're gonna see that we do have some differences between the RT and the, um, the production rendering modes. So there is a different look between the two and uh, it's gonna be quite noticeable in this scene particularly. So as you're noticing here as well, if you saw in the render view compared to what it looks like here in mPlay, it is not the same colors. And that's because this is applying a different color transform to it. So this is through linear um, and it's not, it's not seeing the ACES uh, color space. So I'm not too worried about that because I knew what it was gonna look like inside of the, um, the render view. So we're good with that. And I'll just uh, look at it in compositing to kind of make sure that everything is all good. But as we're rendering it out here, we're almost done now. Uh, you can see a major difference is this ball, um, but also the render time here. So 55 seconds for it to render out this single, singular frame. And if I switch between the two here, you can see there's some differences in the lighting as well as uh, I said the ball specifically. So uh, just the way that light interacts and uh, the reflections are, it's going to have some differences between your scenes. But for the most part, your textures, unless it's uh, something specific like this, this uh, material was just the jade material actually that uh, Redshift has in its material builder. I jump back over here and see all it is is just the, the jade preset. So there is some, some differences between the two, uh, very noticeable in this render, a little bit less noticeable in some of the other ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into one of the other scenes here and kind of take a look at the differences there. All right, so we are now in the wires scene here. So let's go ahead and just render this out. Um, like I said in the last one, production render, just set to high and nothing else was really changed. Let's go ahead and render that to in play. And let's see what it looks like. Still using aces for this, um, so nothing changes there. And we'll see what it looks like in the render. Specifically this render, um, it does not have too much of a difference. There is a little bit of a difference and we'll take a look at that, but the difference between the two is very minimal. So in certain situations you can get away with uh, using the RT version instead of the production render and it'll save you a ton of time in rendering. So there's our production render and let's go ahead and just render out our RT. And it is already pretty much done. So three seconds for the RT version. And for the production render, you can see it takes 10 times longer. So 30 seconds there. And if we look between the two, if I flip back and forth between the two, you can tell a tiny little difference. If I zoom in here, specifically on the reflections in the background, you're gonna see that this one is the production render. And then if I switch to RT, the reflections aren't quite as noticeable. So there is a little bit of difference in the reflections, but that's really about it for this uh, scene. Pretty simple scene. So uh, as you're noticing here, some of the differences I think that you're probably gonna notice are gonna be in your more complex scenes. So I'd say RT is probably going to be best for scenes where you're doing like motion graphics type stuff, not a whole lot of like heavy scene intensive stuff. And you probably wanna be using um, the production render for those types of scenes anyways. But for motion graphics, I think that the RT render is going to be absolutely perfect and gives you good quality and uh, at a very, very fast render time. So let's jump into the last scene and we'll take a look at the differences there. So moving into our final scene here, our settings are the exact same. Let's go ahead and just render this out, take a look at what we're getting. Let's bring this up here. So in this scene, it is, uh, again, a little bit different. Um, some lighting kind of works a little bit differently in this one compared to the, uh, the RT render versus a production render. So let's see, 15 seconds on the production render. Let's go ahead and flip to RT and render that out. And you'll see kind of some of the differences we got going on here. So two seconds to, whoops, 
What did it happen there? So two seconds to render out the RT version. And then we got 15 for the production. But you can see there is a big difference going on between the two. So we have a lot better reflections going on here. Uh, our shadows are definitely more realistic and look a lot better in this one. But they're not too bad in the RT version. We do um, lose out on those reflections that you see here. But we also lose out on the light that we have in the RT version right here. I'm not really sure why that's happening. So this is just uh, an area light facing down that should be should be showing up in our production render, but for some reason it's not. So you can use the RT to light your scenes, but it is going to be a little bit different in your final render. So just be aware of that. But if you're just kind of using the RT to render out uh, animation flipbooks, you can definitely do that super quickly, get an idea of what your uh, animation is going to look like. And in some cases you are even able to use the uh, final renders here and have a decent look. So this doesn't look too bad to be completely honest. Definitely reflections look a lot better in here. And I do like the shadows a lot more in the production render, but overall this one is not too bad. So like I said, RT probably going to be used mostly for like animation flipbooks. You can get away with it with certain things for motion graphics. Uh, you're going to have to just work with a uh, motion blur and, and compositing if you, if you want to use motion blur. Because uh, like I said, motion blur is disabled and RT does not work. But it is super powerful to uh, be able to render out in just two seconds compared to 15. Or like we saw in some of the other ones, it was taking a lot longer, 10 times longer to render out the final scenes in the production render. But I do admit the production render does look does look better, but that's kind of to be expected. Uh, definitely would advise using the RT for uh, just kind of setting up your shaders. And that would honestly maybe be all I would use it for if you're not going to use the RT for the final render. If you want to use your production render for the final render, uh, I definitely wouldn't use it to light your scenes because as you can see here, there is a major difference between the two. And with certain uh, certain shaders, you are going to have some differences, but for the, for the majority of them, I think you will be okay. But anyways, that's kind of a quick overview of the new RT render mode. Uh, something sort of akin to like the Octane um, render mode. So like the, oh, I'm drawing a blank on what it's called right now. But you have the Path Tracer in, RT, er, in Octane. Oh, and the direct lighting. So this is more like a direct lighting type thing. Um, but I know Octane is also working on their own version of this. But Redshift beat it too beat them to the punch it looks like so the octane brigade i think is maybe what it's called will kind of probably compete with this somewhat but this is super powerful to have in redshift and can, to be completely honest the new edition of the um where are we at where'd it go the aces uh brainer mode being the default for redshift totally changes the game on which render will give you better looking results just out of the box and get you better results quicker especially if you are uh, going to composite stuff later on this gives you so much more control over the colors and everything else inside of uh, your compositing uh, software versus octane which to be completely honest it is kind of a pain to to get set up with uh, with aces you can do it but it does take a lot more than just hey i'm going to click this button and switch over to aces or not even have to worry about it so redshift definitely changing the game here trying to changing the conversation so hopefully this helped you out and gave you an insight into what the redshift versus um your old version of redshift production render versus the new oct or the new um real-time render will do and also kind of a, an insight and in how it compares to octane so Anyways, I do have a bunch of other videos on my channel. On, I do have some on Redshift. I do have some on Octane. 
I do have a bunch of stuff on Houdini as well. Uh, so if you're interested in any of that, make sure you guys check that out. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.